The second winning series is a unique sports program that probes into the often controversial world of professional and amateur sports. Sports View Today. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Sports View. I'm Ron Cameron. And I'm Bob Page. Our sponsors in the program today, as always, Al Dietrich Olsenbiel. Uncle Al at a still relatively new location on M59 in Waterford. It's been a little over a year now, right? A year and a half Almost or so. Almost two years, Bob. Almost two years. How tempest fugits, as they say, huh? How time flies. Pardon me, the Latin. I know one over your head. But at any rate, Uncle Anything Al has... Anything you say goes over my head. <laughs> Uncle Al has special lease deals on beautiful new 1988 Olsenbiels at Al Dietrich Olds in Waterford. We have shooters, Harry Keefe, Joe Shoney, and the folks who bring you that fine nightclub, as well as several others around the Detroit metro area we'll be telling you about. We've got Sports Fans Journal, and in the next half hour, you'll find out everything you ever yes. wanted if to know like about. If you'd like to subscribe, dial us number 24 hours a day. By the way, it's available. Newsstands, bookstores, and Tiger Stadium souvenir stands. That phone number, 350-3530. We've got Maxie's Main Street in the heart of, yes, Ronnie, beautiful downtown Royal Oak on Main Street, just south of 11 Miles. Steve Middle, uh, Pinto and Company now have their open-air cafe once Is again. Is that like your hot, your hot air? Yes, that's right. We have passed the Pro-Am Sports Systems, and we want to mention, where are we? We want to mention... It's Russian roulette with the camera. So I want to mention our it's newest just, sponsor. So you've been out drinking this morning. We, and I have to do this program with you, pal. With uh, your our newest program, better. great new spot. Speaking of drinking, if that's what you're into, you, you all should try. It's called the Grand Slam Saloon. It's in Troy, kind of out in the northern Oakland County area. It's on DeQuinter, just south of 16 Mile. Leon Brank, a company, great sports bar, a nice spot anyway, and we'll tell you all about it upcoming, the Grand Slam Saloon. Our guest in the program today, longtime National Leaguer, as Sid would say, Dave Lewis, now the assistant coach with the Red Wings, and we got a whole bunch of issues we can talk with him oh, about sure. from the recently concluded season, the Bob Prober thing, of course, uh, what's happening in the playoffs between Edmonton and Boston, and what's happening especially in the National Hockey League uh, this offseason as regards coaching. Real surprise. Guys who are competent coaches losing jobs. Uh, now Jean Perron apparently has been forced out by the well, media let me tell you in something. Montreal. It's a, uh, it's a situation years ago when you came up in sports, you played out of fear. You played because you're afraid somebody's going to take your job, and you had to impress that coach to get in the lineup. Nowadays, the coach has to impress the players. I take the case of Jean Perrin, the pressure in Montreal, and the players, he worked him too hard, so the players had him fired, more or less. Same thing in Philadelphia. This guy's an excellent coach. He has the best record in hockey in the last five years. This guy's just almost won the Stanley Cup a couple of years ago, had big injuries this year to the team, or they had won a, they got 100 more points, at least. He gets fired because the players don't like him because he works them too hard. We had Tim Curry even say that on this program sure. about three years ago. And now they're saying Mike Keenan could go to Pittsburgh, where Pierre Kramer apparently is about ready to leave. And they say he could go to Montreal. Or St. Louis. Or St. Louis. And this is another issue. I mean, I'm not close to the situation, obviously, and neither are you. But it seemed to me that Jacques Martin was a pretty nice good coach. Did a nice, did a nice job. job. And, he gets uh, fired. And he gets fired. Rod and, Cur and, uh, I think Ron Caron, who's a good hockey man, just has to look point fingers when things don't go his way. He made some questionable trades, and then now he fires this guy. Oh, the coach goes, I stay. All right, you talking about the fact that the fact, and I don't dispute that, that the tail's wagging the dog, the players are too no problematic. No question about it. Let me tell you, well, there's one other person who, as much as anything, has been responsible for what's happening to coaches in the league now. And this may surprise you, but I'm going to tell him this when he comes on the show in the next week or so, and that is Jacques Demers. People around the league look at what a difference one man, one coach made in a laughing stock franchise going to ultra respectability. And they think, the and they think well, we can get a guy, he'll do the same thing. If it's the right coach, the right guy, we can bring him in. Well, that that's, that's what's happening right Good now. Good coaches are out now because of this farce. 
Chuck Daly situation with the Pistons. Chuck is just about without a contract, and Joe Falls had that big impassioned column on the front page of the news sports section over the weekend saying, why don't the Pistons take care of Chuck Daly and so on and so forth? Well, you know, I like Chuck Daly personally. He does a nice, he's a good coach. He's a good coach. I respect him. But however, you know, he is an NBA coach. And I just do not see NBA coaches as being as important as coaches in other sports, all right? I think there are other people who could come in well, and I coach think, this Pistons franchise. I think for a lot of reasons. I think for a lot of reasons. Number one being the drug situation. Well, not the top one, but one of them being the drug situation. You've got so many guys that are so spaced out on the court. Just look at their faces. You can tell when they come to town. And and you, you got a, you got that problem right there. You got the problem of the today, players running the team. Of the, of the players running the team. These guys are making exactly. too much money over too long a period, and they don't do anything for it. My them. sources in the Piston organization tell me about three or four weeks ago that Adrian Dantley went to Chuck Daly and had a little talk with him and said, Coach, I think one of the problems here is that you treat Lambeer and Isaiah differently than you treat the rest of us. And Chuck purportedly said to Adrian, Yeah. I think it's That's right, right. I, wouldn't. I mean, and this is what you have to do. You have to, now, you have to be a politician, and yeah. I think this is one of Chuck Daly's greatest well, sure. strengths. It's, it's, it's now, a great strength of Chuck Daly. The Pistons have offered Chuck Daly a two-year contract at $300,000 per year. We have seen Chuck Daly on TV plugging the Metro Ford dealers. We have seen Chuck Daly on TV doing uh, the cousin clothes ads. We have seen Chuck Daly's well, show on things, Channel okay. 2. He has a radio show on WNIC. Did you see this? This is a page from the TV Guide. How tight a shot of this can we get? I, because you've got to get a real tight shot of this. The TV Guide last week, and zoom in on this, Bill. Can you get it? Right down here in the lower corner, carpet, three rooms, 199, time out, Chuck Daly for Carpet Shack. Now, now, <laughs> now, now, come on. I mean, how much money is this guy making besides whatever the business are paying him? I'll tell you this. It's, and besides, he's got the respect of the media, which is very important today. But, but my point is this. And the players. We want and Chuck the to stay, but Chuck, take the 300 hundred grand a year offer for two years with the Pistons. Okay, I know yeah. Rick Pitino makes more, but he's in a major, major media market. It's a market. little different situation. We hope Chuck stays, but I'm not crying about Chuck Daly's and he, money. And he means more to that, you know, because of the, the situation in New York, Pitino definitely means a little bit more than Daly does here, and I think Daly's an excellent coach. Chuck Tanner and his coaching staff fired him. Well, Chuck up. Tanner's a good manager. He's just been given a bunch of garbage out there to work with, and you can go right to the top, and I'll tell you why. When it started is when this clown gave all the, and I'm talking about Ted Turner, he's a clown in my opinion, gave all this money to nothing to free agencies, signed. He had the biggest payroll in baseball, and the team just went right to the bottom. There's Bruce, your free Bruce Sutton right didn't throw a pitch for two or three years, did he? Now, Robowski. <laughs> yeah, he's getting paid until 2019. Yeah. When's the last time he's pitched? It's unbelievable. Now, I see also that Willie Stargell, Tanner, uh, Tanner's right-hand man, was fired here. And I, now, I don't know what was behind this, but on the surface, didn't it stink on the, surf, on the surface when the Pittsburgh Pirates call up Willie and say, Willie, we'd like to honor you because you were such a great player, Hall of Famer for us. Did you hear about this? Yes. We're going to have a day for you and in Pittsburgh. And then Willie thinks, well, if they're going to have a day, they're going to make more money on ticket sales. He calls the Pirates back and says, you can have a day for me, but I want to be paid an appearance fee. He wants to be paid by the Pirates to honor him with a day in Pittsburgh. That's and the Pirates said, hell with you. Part. Hell with you. And, they, and they can't, I, again, I don't know what was behind it. But it just I agree with the, the Pirates' uh, some thinking on that, too. Hard to believe. I mean, they want to honor you with a day, and you say, give me your money first. Yeah. You know, man, unbelievable. Well, anyway, Dave Lewis is here on Sports Feeder today, and we have a lot to talk about with what him, we which we will do when the Red Wings assistant coach comes up. Bye. What's the problem, lady? Where's your husband? I don't need this. You don't. Let Uncle Al's army come through for you. Yes, ma'am. No problem. Coffee? Uncle Al's highly trained army attacks general and major repairs on your private vehicle in a personal way. Tanks? No. Tank you. Uncle Al, crushing the competition and high-cost service with the respect you deserve. Yeah! Al Dietrich, Oldsmobile, GMC Truck in Waterford. If you're a sports fan, you should subscribe to this, Sports Fans Journal. For just $15 a year, you can read columns from George Kell, Ernie Harwell, Jim Northrup, Dick Vitale, Don Cherry, Bob Feller, Bill Frieder, George Allen, Eli Zarrett, Larry King, and many more, as well as features and profiles. For more information, call 24 hours a day, 350-3530. Sports Fans Journal is also available at local newsstands and bookstores and is sold at Tiger Stadium souvenir stands. 
It's brand new and it's soon to be the hottest seafood place in suburban Detroit. It's TK's Seafood Grotto. At TK's you'll find the finest and most original seafood anywhere. 35 different dishes, each prepared to order with the freshest fare flown in every day. TK's also has great steaks and chops, lunch or dinner, and there's entertainment too, beginning with TK's special cocktail hour at 5 p.m. So whether it's a special evening out for two or groups up to 100, it's TK's Seafood Grotto, the northern suburbs' most beautiful new restaurant. We can be easily reached from anywhere in the metropolitan Detroit area. Located at 10 Mile in Southfield, please come out and see us soon. If you're looking for some place to go in northern Oakland County, you've just found it. Welcome to the Grand Slam Saloon, where the action never stops seven nights a week with our very own slam band, an all-star band from all over Metro Detroit, six months in the auditioning and the making. We've got our own special house drinks. We've got our own dancers. They're called the Slamettes. Sports always on our four widescreen TVs and great food for lunches and dinners. So remember, whether you're just out with your buddies or your softball team, it's a Grand Slam Saloon. We're back on Sports View with Dave Lewis, assistant coach of the Red Wings, a longtime player in the National League for many, many years you played. And now you're coming over to coach uh, the team. All right, let's talk about... Uh, the adjustment you go, got from playing to coaching and things like that and about being with hey, the right organization now? Well, first of all, it was an easy transition. Um, at the beginning of this season that we just finished, I had the option to... I played a few games to see how I'd play and they wanted me to play. So we had a lot of defensemen and they came to me about mid-November and said that, well, we'll give you the option. You can stay on as a player if you want or you can come with us and be a coach. It's not a, a, a short time uh, proposition it's going to be a long time thing and I thought about it and uh, they said if you want to play we can only play maybe once a week so at my age I was 34 years old timing and conditioning are so important at my age and uh, I didn't think that I could contribute the way that I had the last year and the years before when I played in the league to the, the way that I wanted to so made my uh, decision easy I said yes okay what will my duties be so I'm in charge of the defense and I said great that's that's all I want now that's something this team and a lot of other teams have lacked over the years I know the Red Wings had just terrible defensive teams and they're sitting here with a guy like a Bill Gadsby writes for sports fans really man they do and one of the greatest do, do we do we charge you for that plug no or? you do not <laughs> you better not either uh, but Bill Gadsby is one of the two or three greatest defensemen ever to play this game he was the, in my mind just about the best I've seen mm -hmm. and and defensive defenseman. Well, offensive too. Defensive. No, defensive. offensive. Back then, he was he was second. You to take Harvey. Gasby, I'll take Paul Coffey, and I'll take Bobby. Orton. No, but, but you, uh, the game was different then, yeah, and right. he was great offensive yeah. defenseman too. And here's a guy sitting right there said he'd like to have the job. Oh, the Red Wings didn't want him. Well, that's I don't know where that came from. I it's the first time I've heard about that. But I think right now in in hockey, it's like other sports. You're getting very specialized special teams, penalty killing, power play. Yeah. I think defense, uh, defensive patterns, how you play the game, how you develop young players is so critical in today's game. Dave, I think defense is the most important part of today's game, sure despite it is. what people think. I look at Edmonton this year that are not explosive like they were before. And they do have three or four guys, or five or six guys that can yeah. do that. But basically, the Edmonton's winning this year, as far as I'm concerned, because they've got stay-at-home defensemen. Exactly. And maybe this will start changing the trend a little bit, because I think it's lacking, although it's changed in the last couple of years. Well, I think any championship in any sport you win on defense. You ask any of the great coaches, uh, what won for But Edmonton for you? didn't do that for... Well, uh, I know, but they still had great goaltending. Yes. I mean, but that's I mean, a great I'm defense about right there, men. too. Yeah, but I you know stay at home defense. Well, the only one they lost was well, they lost Paul Coffey and Roots Lane, but they never had Roots Lane in two years ago, and they still won, or three years ago, I think it was, and they still won. But they do have those explosive players, like you said. But overall, I think the teams that get that far, look at Boston, they're there strictly because of their defense. Montreal won the one year because of their defense. Islanders had tremendous defense, plus they had Mike Bossy, Brian Trotche, and they had Billy Smith playing in net. So those are the keys to winning a Stanley Cup. A lot of the older guys, older defensemen on the wings, played a prime role in the recently concluded playoff. Shaq wanted to go with experience rather than the kids. Did you miss it, especially during the playoffs, thinking, you know, I, I could still be playing, and if I were playing, I'd be out there right now? Well, last year was the most enjoyable season I ever had, and uh, as a player this last season physically it was hard for me to get up for a game mentally it was very hard I, I, my body just couldn't do it so I, I sort of realized coming to the end I could see I could see the end of the tunnel and once I reached that point I, I made my decision then that I'm gonna not miss the game on the ice I can still be involved in 
be active and be nervous and do all the different things that I did as a player, but not on the ice. And I didn't miss it that way. Now you're going to coaching. You, you, you say you're, at least right now, you're glad you did it. What is your long-range plans, plans in that, the, the, that area? Well, I'd like to work with Jock for a couple of years, learn all his ins and outs, his little tricks. I've learned an awful lot this year. And I think that uh, maybe down the road, somewhere along the line, I'd like to get into head coaching. Uh, I just have to Despite wait and see. Despite what's happened, the, the exactly. crap is yeah. security, huh? Yeah, well, it's all the pressure is put on yourself. And the same thing done when you play. You have to perform. And if you don't perform, you, you don't uh, get work. So that's a simple fact. And I think that winning is everything, and same as your player. You had to win. If you want to get paid well, you want to be in a winning organization, you want to be in a winning team, you had to perform. So I look at it that way. It's a little different maybe than a lot of other people look at it. Now, what about the uh, aging defensive core of the Red Wings? Uh, both Ron and I commented on the show last week, and we were very upset to see Harold Sneps go. I know you've got to bring Doug Huda up from the mm -hmm. minor leagues, but to me, Sneps can still play the game. He's a defensive defenseman, great leadership, great mm -hmm. guy to have around. And you've got a whole bunch of other people like this. What are you going to do about my Mike O'Connell, what are you going to do about all these older guys? Well, that's a good question. We have a lot of good good defensemen. Um, I think Harold Schnapps is going to be missed by the fans, by the players, by the coaching staff, everybody involved. He's a tremendous competitor. Did, would uh, you have leader. let him go? Do you feel he had to be let go? Yeah, I think so. I think you have to make room for improvement. Um, nothing against Harold and his ability, but we have Doug Hoodas in the minors, and if we don't bring him up, we're going to lose him. He's going to be either lost because of lack of confidence in the organization, or he's going to lose confidence in his ability, or he's going to be traded, and he'll develop into a good player one day, and we're not going to have him. And I don't think next year we're going to carry nine defense and we're going to probably carry eight i think nine and uh it's too many you have to make too many decisions you have to uh i don't know uh explain too many different things to too many people why they're not playing and not necessarily because of their bad play it's just that you want it you have a certain game plan that you want to use for a particular team or particular yeah. time in the season and you have to do that what, who what do about, you feel about o'connell okay and, yeah, and okay o'connell and howard i'm sure that they're both going to be back i think dougie howard signing a termination contract and mike o'connell still on mm -hmm. a contract so uh, right now they're going to be there they're going to be our experience they're going to be our leaders and uh they both have been and there's no reason why they can't continue right, well, they're not going to play as much though you're talking trades then in other words somebody's going to be traded if you're only well, going to carry, for instance, nine defensemen, those two guys are going to be back. Now, you, you can just get into the numbers game right here and figure out somebody's going to be traded. Well, that's a possibility, too. Um, I haven't said yes or no. It all depends on what happens in camp. Uh, Jeff Sharples, he's a great young player. If he doesn't have a good camp, it might be a decision to send him down for a while like we did last year. The players That was, that, that was interesting. Yeah, the players are going to have to play themselves onto the team. Rick Zombo, I thought game in and game out was the Red Wings' best defenseman last exactly. year. Exactly, I agree with you 100%. Thank you. Best defensive defenseman last best year? Best defenseman! I think the you best... Know, do, I do, think, you know what a defenseman is? I think the best defenseman on the team in terms of his all-around game was Lee Norwood. Lee Norwood had a tremendous year. He didn't play as long as Rick Zombo. Rick Zombo showed up every night. and. That's right. uh, he was healthy, he played well, he's a leader, he's really matured. He is, I think, too, was our best defenseman this season. Thank you. Okay, Thank that's you my much. That's now, and that's if you watch hockey the right way, you'll see that they used the best defenseman last year. The, when do you come into your prime as a defenseman in the NHL? Oh, years ago, I think it was uh, 26, <laughs> 26, 27 right. years old. But today, I think it's a little sooner. Um, just because you're thrown into more situations. Uh, Which isn't good uh, to bring brought up that early. Well, look at Wesley last night in the, in the Boston series. Uh, he got put into a couple of situations he didn't have properly and, and cost him a couple of goals. Yeah, mm -hmm. But um, I think the way that we've handled some of our kids, uh, Jeff Sharples, uh, Steve Chason, Rick Zombo, they've paid their dues. Uh, uh, Stevie Chason, was, he came into Jock this year and said, Jock, could you please send me to the minors? All I want to do is play. I've never heard a player do that. It shows great character. He mm -hmm. wants to go down and improve his skills and learn. And, then, and learn and then come back up. So that, well, I think we've done it the right way. We've handled each player a little bit differently and yet all the same. And that, that's what you have to do. I think 23, 24 years old now, the players are strong. They have known the game. They learn how to play the game consistently, not just three or four good games and then down three or four games. You have to, as a defenseman, you have to be at a level. Yeah. And you want to maintain that so coaches can get a read okay. off you. And I, we've done that well. Just quickly, because we've got to get to a break, who's the best defenseman in the NHL? And who's the most underrated defenseman in the NHL? A guy that you okay. really like, but maybe the fans don't know. Ray much. Bork's the best defenseman. Kevin Lowe's the most underrated. Great. Well, oh, but, but you can't oh, say, do I But I don't see how you can say about Kevin Lowe, because Kevin Lowe gets a lot of publicity. Oh, knows Kevin Lowe. This guy's the best defensive defenseman in the yeah. league. Yeah, not enough. I agree. I think that even the people on TV say he's underrated, he doesn't get enough publicity. Why doesn't somebody do something about it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But he is watching some of the oh. things that he does, two-on-ones, how he blocks shots, how he moves a puck. Smart. 
And he's not real quick. And he's no, not he's, real he's big. Small, but he's, what he is. uses all his talents. And he's very I agree. Smart. I, th I said that all before. Right. I thought he's. I think I said it in my publication. Kevin Lowe is the best right. defensive defenseman in the league. I know one thing that Ron Cameron and Dave Lewis disagree on, and that is Ron Cameron's ridiculous assertion on this program a week ago that quote Bob Probert should be traded right now. And we'll Let talk about the. We'll talk about the Bob Probert incident with Dave Lewis and have more right after. Harry Keith and Joe Oshone bring you the number one names in live entertainment. Bootleggers Live, Lansing, Bootleggers Uptown, Ferndale, Bootleggers Again, Dearborn, the Body Rock Cafe Detroit, and soon the all new Palladium Downriver. On the west side, well, it's happening seven nights a week at Shooters in Westland. Shooters has it all drink specials, great DJs, and every night, Shooters high caliber live entertainment under one of the finest light shows in Metro Detroit. If you don't want to dance, there's always sports on incredible 10 foot widescreen TVs. At Shooters on Ford Road, one half mile east of Wayne Road in Westland. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi Nick. What brings you into Maxie's? I'm having dinner with the Dovers. There's Ben Dover, his wife Eileen Dover, and the kids. There are more interesting people for you to meet here at Maxie's. Besides that, we have great food, superb entertainment, wonderful atmosphere. Why don't you come out and you'll discover why hundreds of people are saying, meet me at Maxie's. It's the place to be in the northern suburbs. And there's a flipped over, skipped over, the ran from across the lake, float over, and from the rodeo, bucked over is going to be here. Throughout the years, Janapolis has, has meant a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Uh, but today we're concentrating on our restaurant food business, and today we're one of the finest restaurants in Michigan. The new feature that we have in the restaurant is the grill, that we char grill all our fresh seafood and our ribs. We're very proud of the fact that we get a lot of the major sports celebrities throughout the country in our restaurant for the good food. And as you well know, we take the ribs down to the Tiger Stadium in the locker room after a lot of their games. And our slogan is that from our family to your family, We'd like to invite you to Janopolis's for dinner. Janopolis on the Grill, casual dining seven nights a week at 12 Mile and Middle Belt, Farmington Hills. We're back on Sports View with Red Wings assistant coach Dave Lewis. And yes, I did make the comment. I, for several reasons, I made the comment that, that Bob Probert should be traded. Yet the Red Wings cannot afford to trade Probert. Because Jock made the statement, you're getting one more chance. And he's defying authority. And that's why I did it. He's got a problem. And I think, I think he should be traded. Yet... It would hurt, kill this team if you so were So he's backing off his statement. All right. But well, how do you feel about it? first of all, uh, you have to look at it a couple of different ways. You can look at it as an organization saying that who's going to replace a player like Bobby Prober? It's, it's going to be hard to go out and get somebody like that. Um, secondly, if you do trade him, who is going to do the things that this organization has done for him when he gets traded, let's say, to the New York Rangers or some other city? His mother lives across the border in Windsor. He's got a lot of personal friends in Windsor that may be and his in problem. Detroit. Well, he's got a lot of people taking care of him in our organization, too. Taking care maybe is uh, a word that you don't like to hear, but he has to make the first step, regardless if it's here, if it's in New York, if it's in L.A., if it's in Alaska. He has to do something about his problem. And Dave, problem. it's been to told me by, by a few different people that he'd been drinking all year. And Wrong. That, he was, that he was caught in by, by people that I saw, or th that have told me they've been with him doing I've, it. I've heard that, too. I've well, I, you know... I don't think that's right. I think that's isolated incidents, maybe once or twice throughout the season, or maybe three times. Mm -hmm. But um, he was taking a drug called Anabuse. And right. anytime you take that drug, and if you have a drink, even, uh, I guess, cough syrup will uh, make you violently ill. But supposedly Ill. he took it sporadically and deliberately didn't that's take right. it. Well, at times. At, times, at times he was taking it sporadically, mm -hmm. yes. Um, I don't know how you can monitor. We had Colin Campbell, assistant, the other assistant coach, uh, giving him the drug to take. And he was taking it. Other times he wouldn't take it. Um, at the end, I don't think he was taking it uh, through the players because he said he had a funny reaction to it. it was yeah, making we haven't him, asked him uh, his reaction to the whole incident. Yeah, well, what was your feeling? It, it's well, a couple of things, too. I think uh, it was bad timing. I think the media blew it out of proportion. Um, it's unfortunate that uh, the number of players that were involved were involved, but then again, quite a few of them weren't playing, mm -hmm. and that uh, shouldn't have any effect on the game because they couldn't dress. They, they physically they couldn't dress. They should have, every one of them, grabbed Bob Probert and taken him back. Every um, one of them. I mean, they shouldn't have been with them. They well, shouldn't have been with them. Well, I'm not Peter arguing that. Klima taking him out during Yes. What's well, the deal? Well, that I don't know. I don't understand Peter's reasoning for that. And then again, I think that uh, you have to look at Bobby Probert. He's an adult. He knows the situation. He mm -hmm. knows he had a great playoff. And sometimes, I guess, 
alcoholics have a problem dealing with success, and that was one of the problems. I kind of think three or four of those people are gone no matter what. Well, one's already gone. Darren Elliott's already been let go. Yeah, he's been let go. Um, that I'm not sure of. I don't make those decisions, and I know that uh, Jacques and Jimmy D have talked to each and every one of those players, and... Uh, even well, though I know you can't Cleveland comment, the one guy that won't be up. back would be Darren Veach. And, and what happened to Veach this last year? Why did he have such a bad season? That I don't know. I know Darren very well. I roomed with him all last season. I played with him. I think he had an off season. Um, the, what the reason is, why does a, a good player have a, have a bad year? Is it problems at home? Is it problems yeah. on the ice? Is it problems financially? Or did he uh, overachieve the year before? He came up a couple um, of bad years before he came here, and then he had a great year two years ago. Yeah, he had a, he did have a great year. I don't know if he overachieved. I know that uh, he wants to rebound. He knows that uh, he was thinking, here's his thinking before the playoffs started, maybe I can salvage this year in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, is, he is didn't. Is he gone now, yes or no? No. Okay, and then I want to ask one final question before we get to the last break. Did this put, in your view, a damper on what the Wings accomplished this season? Um, I think that it's growing pains. That's the way I look at it. I think we're going to be a better team because of it. But I think we had a good year also. Definitely. Even though they defied authority. Outstanding year. On that thing, you think you'd be a better team because of it? Definitely. We'd be mentally stronger. Um, we know how to deal with different situations. We know what to expect now. Players aren't going to do the same thing. Ryan, we've got to get to a break. Okay. We'll okay. close it out with Dave Lewis after this final time. Out. Thermo Window, the Midwest's exclusive manufacturer of the new Polytex 4 vinyl replacement window, is celebrating their anniversary with an unbelievable five-day offer. This week only, buy five windows for $995. Our Thermo insulated tilt-in windows are specially designed to make cleaning a snap. Call now and receive a coupon for a free energy-saving storm door. At Thermo Window, we manufacture, install, service, and guarantee what we sell. Buy Factory Direct. Five windows, only $995. Call today and save. If you're a sports fan, you should be reading this magazine, Sports Fans Journal. For just $15, you can subscribe, and here's how. Our columnists include Ernie Harwell, George Kell, Denny McLean, Don Cherry, Dick Vitale, Jim Northrup, Bob Feller, George Allen, Bill Gadsby, and a whole lot more. Sports Fans Journal is also available in local newsstands and bookstores. For more information, call 24 hours a day, 350-3530. Sports Fans Journal, a must for all sports fans. If cared for properly, your teeth can last your lifetime. Hello, I'm Dr. Mitchell Klein, here to tell you that in adults, gum disease is the major cause of tooth loss. There are warning signs. Do your gums bleed? Are they red or swollen? Are your teeth loose? Do you have bad breath? If you have any of these symptoms, call me today at 851-2980. That's 851-2980. There's no charge for consultation. Tooth loss can be prevented, so call today. We're back on Sports View, closing it out with the Red Wings assistant coach Dave Lewis. Dave, in my opinion, Edmonton's the best team in hockey, even though they 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 finished with the, you know mm -hmm. behind yeah. Calgary in the season. They proved it in the playoffs. The Red Wings still got a little ways to go before they're in, the, in their level. In my opinion, they they've got to get a couple guys that can score off the right side. Yeah, I agree. I think that we're just a couple of players away. Um, I think to have a successful team in the Stanley Cup to win a Stanley Cup, you have to have good goaltending. Um, you have to have two solid lines. Now we have. Uh, if we were healthy this year, we'd have given them a better run, but we got some injuries, key injuries, and uh, you have to have a defenseman that can uh, do something on the point with the puck. Offensively. I, I to totally agree, but if they had Jimmy Carson instead of Joe Murphy, that might have made a difference this year, too. Well, you know, it's you over and done with now. We, we had Mary Lemieux, too. We could have done something different. Yeah, but we, had, we don't have is, Carson. Is, is Murphy yeah. ever going to be a player? I think so. Um, it's going to take him a little longer. It takes players longer than other players. I think he's going to be a good 30-goal scorer in the league. Does he he's, have hockey sense? Yes, he I does. I wonder if he does. he does. Yeah, he does. Does um, he? 
Yeah, when you live with them day in and day out for uh, sure. six, seven months, you know a lot yeah. more about the personality than watching them in the stands. David, I thought you had an outstanding season. Congratulations. Have fun on the golf course this summer, <laughs> and we'll see you in training camp this coming fall. I want to thank our sponsors in the program as well today. Maxie's Main Street. We had Pass, the Pro-Am Sports Systems. Uh, we had Sports Fans Journal, issue number 21 out right now. Grand Slam Saloon, Leon Brank and Company, our newest sponsor out there on DeQuinder, south of 16 Mile in Troy. Shooters, uh, Harry Keefe, Joe Oshone, and uh, all their fine nightclubs throughout the metro area. And, of course, Al Dietrich Olsenwheel. We've got some gift certificates for you, but we also got an Uncle Al cap, a tanks but no tanks cap that you can wear <laughs> on a golf course uh, when you go out this summer. You can hear Ron Cameron on WCAR Radio, AM 1090, Wednesday afternoons, 4 to 5. Thanks to Dave Lewis. Thanks to you for joining us on this edition of Sports TV. Bye-bye, everybody.